There have been moments in time where scholars paused their hustle and bustle to reflect on the history of our ancient world. They cultivate retellings of events from our past in order to study our mistakes and create progress for a better future. This is not one of those moments. This is Drunk History! All right, so for a minor uh, trivial moment of intra, intra, intra introduction, uh, let us say hello to the world. Hello, world. Hello, world. Uh, yeah. My name is Sophia the Orange, and with me is the most magnificent and dignified under all circumstances, Edelheid of Magnificat. That and I just made up that title. I'm hoping that it works for you. I know you have others, many other titles. Uh, next name. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take Magnificat. it. Magnificat. Okay. For Magnificat. The <laughs> and we are enjoying adult beverages, and it's it's a it's a good time to be at home, uh, and enjoying your adult beverages and talking about history, because we love it. It's the best, <laughs> isn't? Isn't history the best? And I'm in my bed, so like I'm literally in. Like, I don't know. It's really 14th century. Pajamas, you are in the Renaissance, it's you are in Renaissance underwear. I am. I am. It's, it's, a little, it's a little early. Is it early? Well, it's early a little early. Bed or early in history? It's a little earlier than the history that we're going to be talking about, but I'm just going to uh, call it my ode to the War of the Roses. So we have, oh, I have something connected. The War of the Roses negligee. Oh, that's excellent. I toast your negligee. Mm -hmm. Mm. Excellent. So our purpose today is to enjoy the ridiculousness of this particular time and period, which is 2020, and look back onto other, other kinds of ridiculous times in history <laughs> when people like the Tudors were running amok. <laughs> can, can we just talk about... I mean, do we do we want to talk specifically about Henry VIII? I mean, he's kind of a man whore. Let's just be honest. He is one of the most enigmatic, and I, I can't remember what that really means right now at the moment, but I know it's a big word that's important. So enigmatic type people. Everybody knows who Henry VIII is. I mean, he has a song written about him. I am Henry VIII, I am. Henry VIII, I am. Henry VIII, I am. Exactly. That way. Everybody knows it. <laughs> There's not a kid, okay, if there are children who do not know it, let us, let us encourage them to learn it, ask their parents, mom, what is this, mom or dad, or parent of some, ch you know, whatever kind, what is this song, Henry VIII, I am, I am, because it's important for children to know all of the pieces of history, including the art and the music, and all of it. I mean, I'm not going to say that kids should be watching this. Like, I write this second. But parents, teach your kids this song so they can annoy yeah, the shit out of me. Yeah, you're them. right. Speak to the parents. Parents, this is important. Just as much as it's important to know when you can start drinking like this. When. Not yeah. if. When. And when you might want to teach them about other things about life, like how to pay taxes and how to balance your checkbook. Yes. Also teach them Henry VIII. That is, is teaching them Henry VIII, also teaching them to drink in bed. Best yeah. choice for drinking. It's a good place to In bed, comfy, where you're not going to fall very far, and you're not going to bump into somebody else. No. Exactly. Very safe place. Good place to, good place to drink. Absolutely. Now, hold on. Hold on just a second. Honey, do you want to, do you want to pass? Do you want to go upstairs? Yes, I'm going to go upstairs. Okay, <laughs> you know why he's wearing his cloak? <laughs> hey, good on him. I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him. The cutest thing in the world. I adore him. Oh my God, he's so funny. <laughs> my husband is adorable and hilarious, and I just, I'm, luck I'm the luckiest gal alive. I believe you. I love my husband too, but boy, he's a he's he's a pill. Love he, you, Christoph. He is an interesting person, I have to say. I like being around him, and he's very funny. He is, and he has a great sense of humor. He is. And 
and he's adorable. He is. I mean, from afar, you know, I've never really inspected him close up to see the, you know, the, the things around, you know. I'm going to add to my title, yes. what did you call me? Magnificat. Edelheid what is it? Magnificat. Edelheid La Magnificat. I'm, I'm going to be Edelheid La, La Magnificat, the patient, because <laughs> that's what it takes. That's what it takes. I believe it. I believe it. <laughs> patience to all wives. Ta patience to all wives. Yes. Shall we there let, you go. let be patient? Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we gonna, should we talk about history? I would love to talk about history. Now, I have to say, I recently have been reading more about the period before Henry VIII, when Henry VII became a thing. He was a thing. Henry VII was a thing, because before Henry VII, there was this War of the Roses that was all about stuff. And now, I just have to say, I love roses. Roses are beautiful. My husband is a certified rosarian, and I got a garden out there that is full of magnificent, beautiful roses. But the War of the Roses was not pretty. I mean, from what I understand, there were pretty people in it. Pretty people? Really? I've seen some of those paintings. Hey, look, 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 look. Perception of an artist is not always the best. Yeah, given, given, yes, artists. But, but in several books I have read that Edward IV was a very, very attractive man. I, really? I mean, he was, he was, uh, he's the tallest uh, English king that has ever reigned. The tallest? Six four. Wow, that, okay, so. Yeah. Couldn't play that. So, they haven't invented it yet, but still handy. He can still reach the top jo the top shelf. For yeah, now, he's the one that married the Woodville lady, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She and she was like apparently one of the most beautiful women in the world. But you know, I mean, when you're queen, everybody says yeah. you're pretty. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. You can't really. Get I, know, out of that. I know people. I know. Yeah, you do. You've been there. You've been like, yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. nice of you, but yeah, okay. Let's be real. Yeah. Thank you. So, <laughs> so, yes, I'm sorry. Excellent. So War of Roses was not about roses. It, no, not at all. I, I, so, you know, I don't think that term even came into uh, use until like the Victor maybe a little earlier than the Victorian period. But, we can blame them for so much. What though? They, we blame them for stuff, but I gotta tell you, the Victorians were some, this isn't, this is an SCA period, sorry people, the Victorians were some very interesting folks. They had, especially English. I mean, of course, when we say Victorians, we obviously mean all the English. The English. Uh, people that lived at that time that weren't in England, and other people that were not English that were still during the Victorian age. Uh, but yeah, Victoria, man, she like, she was all over it. The whole world. She knew. She had enough I mean, to spread around. Oh my God. It's British Empire. But I mean, the, they were just, they were just, you know, like, they had mummy unwrappings. Those people were weird. And, and. Like, were, like, like for a party? Like for a social yeah. occasion? They would say, hey, yeah. mummy, let's unwrap him. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and not only that. They would take mummies and because they would just find these mummies, right? When they were in Egypt and they would just dig them up. And then they didn't, I mean, like, there's so many mummies that they didn't know what to do with them. And they would bring them back and they would use the mummy wrappings, like the muslin or whatever, and make tea. They would strain tea out of the wrap and have <laughs> mummy tea. So many mummies are coming out of here. <laughs> People, they were crazy. I mean, I say crazy. I think they're kind of cool. And and honestly, like, I wish I was, I wish I was Victor. Well, I mean, gothic. Is that what I'm looking for? Romantic goth? Is that what Victorians are described as? I'm sure in some book they are. Yes. Well, there you go. Well, I figure that, um, well, first of all, I think if any one of us had a time machine, we would all visit the Victorian era at least once. You know, so if we could choose because that's hot times. That's like interesting things going on. 
listen, I know where Jack the Ripper was. I'm going there. Hopefully not to die, but I'm going there. Yeah, like bring your rape whistle. <laughs> I mean, I guess that would help you. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe like bring your revolver. <laughs> I think you maybe bring a gun. Yeah, maybe bring something from the modern day that would actually help you. I'm sorry, I was just thinking in terms of Victorians, you know, where there's like somebody around with a white knight syndrome everywhere and <laughs> wanting I to just mean, go and rescue people. I definitely recommend bringing a gun to a knife fight. That's my advice for today. I mean, yes, bring a gun to a knife fight. I mean, yeah, that's the way it is, yeah. <laughs> so... We're, we're completely off track now, but whatever. It's fine. Frank, Frank is, is um, th uh, what you make of it. It's what you make of it. You know, your path, your path is what you make of it, where you choose to go, where you need to be. I mean, I do think we need to educate the people about the tutors because let, let me just say, I think Gloucester is Trump. Okay, Duke oh. Gloucester was Trump. He, Wait a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Did you just go from the Tudors and throw that to Richard the Third and call him the fucking? Did you just call it Richard the Third Trump? Richard the Third was right before the Tudors because Mr. Tudor was Henry the Seventh, right? That's he right. But did you just call Richard of Gloucester Trump? Yes. I mean, why not? He was horrible. Okay, this book that I'm reading. Was, there is a book I'm reading upstairs. That this is book. One book. Alice in Weird. Like, we love her, right? We love her. Alice, Alice in Weird. Her. Do you want me to get the book on this book? This, this book. This man, it's about the two princes, right? The little boys that died? Little boys? Like, 14 we don't, know that. we don't know that. They're not, we can't find them. They're dead now. We don't know. Well, I mean, sure, but whose fault is that? How do you know? Gloucester. Mr. Gloucester is the guy who took over the throne before the little boys died, and then they just, poof, they died. It looks First, bad. Come on. First, we're going to address him by his appropriate title. Mr. That is <laughs> not right. I mean, I'm happy to learn and be corrected, but like, so Mr.'s not right. Mr. Gloucester is not right. It is, it is, mm, d d oh, fuck, what was, it? it's Richard of Gloucester, Duke of York, Duke, Duke of Gloucester, of England, Duke of Gloucester, and then there was a Clarence, the Duke of Clarence, that was his brother, and then there was some George, who cares about him? Yeah, well, he did die in under mysterious circumstances because Mr. Gloucester was just not cool. George didn't die under mysterious circumstances, his fucking brother killed him. His, his mother killed him? His brother, Edward, his brother. killed him. Well, that's normal. Yeah, Edward, Edward had him executed. Okay, the cute one that you said was like the tallest basketball player in all of Tudor England? Yes. Yeah. So, oh my God, so how can you like these people? I mean, Gloucester had the little boys killed. He took the throne. He's like, dude, I'm just going to take it because my little nephews are just so powerless and little and my brother, he's a, he's a stupid guy. He's dead now. It's all me. So, like, I, I, I'm not going to say that Richard was entirely innocent in this, but he really oh. had no... Shades of gray. Think... Shades of gray. I understand that. It, there are shades of gray. I, yeah. I... Like, do I think Richard said, hey, you, guy right there, totally go into the tower and kill my little nephew, guys? Do I think he said that? that? Allison Weir said it in the book. Allison Weir, no, she won't there. Hey, Allison Weir did research and stuff, and you know how important that is. <laughs> I, think, I think that if I called Allison Weir right now, if she answered the phone, I feel like she would say... Hey, Adelheid, Magnifica, the patient. Magnificat. That... Magnificat. Yes. Okay, cool. Alice on. Okay. 
how do you spell Allison? Allison. It Weir. depends because sometimes they spell it with one L and sometimes they spell it with two. Okay, British writer. British writer, yes. We so, do have the ultimate respect for her because she has written so many books that are so awesome. Great. We love her. Great. We agree on that. We love her. Oh, she's great. She's great. Yes. Uh, I also love Dan Jones, though. So you should probably listen to Dan Jones' stuff, too. Just saying. I could do that. So, I'm, here to, I'm here to broaden my horizons. All right. So, right. so we're arguing about Richard, right? Became Richard the Third, right? We have that. He did. He did. Okay. And you know what? He has one of the like his wife's story is absolutely one of heartbreak, but also and? like and, and or, yeah. or the Whitville lady. That wasn't his wife. That that okay. was and that was York Elizabeth of York. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, it's uh, it white, white rose or red rose? So red rose is Lancaster's and white rose is, is York. White is York for the poor little innocent boys that died. I mean, are we going to keep going back to that? They're kids. They could die anytime. How are you supposed to be safe? Supposed to be safe. Yeah. Do you know I stood in the spot that they found their bones? Yeah, or I believe I, I went told there. Them. I saw the museum. I saw it, and they had reenactors and costumes, and it was really amazing. Oh my god, it was so cool. They had like everybody all over the tower. It was beautiful. I mean, the tower green. Okay, and that didn't happen while I was there. Oh my gosh, That's you've got cool to go back and see the reenactors. That's the cool. pros, the pros, they're really good. Anyway, anyway, I mean, you're good too. We are. We're good reenactors, but these guys, they. They're amazing. They had a troop of like eight people. They were just geniuses. Okay, anyway, yes. So I'm with you. I'm with you. We were there in the room where the bones were found of the small male humans. Look, let's just let's just say, no matter how we want to look at this, some unkind human being. Unkind, yes. Unkind. Ended, yes. Likely ended these child's lives. Yes. Now, yes. they still, they have not done any DNA evidence from the bones that they found in a box beneath a stairwell in the tower. Yes, yes. They've not done DNA evidence to prove that that's those boys, but, I mean. Why not? I don't know why. I don't know. But, Can but to be them honest. Can I ask them to go ahead and do that? Because I would like to ask them to go ahead and do that. Because it would really put my mind at rest. These young boys, 14 and 10, who were supposed to be ruling England, like King. K K K yeah, sorry, King. Uh, king of so, England. The 14 year old know, has to be King of England. Prior to, I want to say, Richard II. <clears throat> mm, prior okay, to him, I, don't uh, I don't know anything before the three. Richard II. I think I'm right. I'm pretty sure that I'm right about this. Okay. Richard, but prior to Richard II, there had only been adult male heirs to the throne of England. Richard II. Yeah. So, Rich, so he was the first child king, right? Like yeah. they had regents under him. And yeah. ever since then, anybody who took the throne as a child, it yes. just failed miserably for England. So I'm not suggesting that Richard... I don't, I don't know that he killed them, but maybe that's what he was thinking. I'm just saying. Maybe that's the reason. There was a precedent set that having a young man before his majority, whatever you, level you want to put that at, before he became a man, he was not ready to lead the England, and it would be bad for the people. And so yes, all the people were like, yeah, we don't really like having a teenager uh, as a king. So Richard II, not a great king. A lot of people didn't like him. Child when he stepped up to the throne. Really? Okay. All right. Well, let's have pressure. I mean, you got to be, you know, pressure, you know, stepping up to lead a country, no matter what age you're at, it's got to be hard. 
And, you know, if you're also a teenager and you're like pimply and you're full of hormones and you're like, oh my God, all these women are throwing themselves at me. This must be normal, right? And you don't have mom and dad around because if you're king at that point, your mom and dad are gone. And everybody around you. At least you're dead. At least you're dead. At least you're dead. Yeah, mom might be there. So if mom's there, oh, but this is when like misogyny rules and women didn't count. And you had to be really, really surreptitious like the Woodvilles in order to get a woman who actually had influence and would be able to talk to her son and say, look, you got to be a grown up. Yeah, Elizabeth, yeah, Elizabeth Woodville, she, uh, she was a little political monster. She really knew what was up. I mean, there's yes. no question about that. She survived. Oh, my God, she survived. Yes, she knew she how to did. use the sanctuary. Sanctuary! She knew how to use that. Twice. Yeah. Yes, yes. twice. And she gave birth to Edward uh, the, the fifth in the sanctuary. Wow. That must have been really tough. I mean, like, how do you get, how do you get all the medical supplies that you need in sanctuary? I mean, well, I mean the sanctuary was an abbey, I think, or a, a nun, something, some religious place that she was in so maybe i thought it was westminster wasn't it, might it? Have been. Well, isn't westminster a church oh my god it is westminster abbey mind blown i did it so all right so uh, we we were i mean we can talk about the yorks i could talk about the yorks all night long but we're here for we are here for henry I do yes, want to know about Henry. I do want to know more about Henry because there's so much to the person that is more than the song of I am Henry VIII, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. I got married to the widow next door. She's been married seven times before. I am Henry VIII. Before. The what? Seven, I was, I was trying to sing. It's bad, but go ahead. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. We can, we can produce it as verse, as prose, instead of some music, you know, because... Even though singing at this point in time would be fine, let me just say, it'd be fine. You, I don't think you want to hear me sing. It's bad. I love it's to hear so you bad. sing. We can sing together. I am Henry the Eighth. I am Henry the Eighth. I am. I am. I am. I am. I have been married seven times. I was seven times. I. I. I was. <laughs> lyrics, man. Not the words. Lyrics. Lyrics are so hard. Okay, right. so we'll move on from that. The Henry of Apes is a magnificent person that goes beyond his song. And I do know the wives equal six. The wives equal six. And that's a lot for anyone, even in Hollywood. So it's true. It's true. we gotta like figure out what what brought a person to do that? And it's not like just six. It's like six, pretty much like year after year after year until the very end. And then it was only a couple of years. Really? So it was like an annual thing to have a wedding? So it's like, let's have New Year's, let's have a wedding. Let's have New Year's, let's have a wedding. So, like, <clears throat> all right, so let's go, let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. 